With the majority of the most popular PC shooters now being free to play, hacking and other forms of cheating have become an even bigger issue for game developers. Because the cost of having to purchase a new copy of a game with every ban being no longer applicable, it's important to find other ways to stop repeat offenders from sticking around. It goes without saying, cheat development is a big business. Here's what one of the leading anti-cheat developers estimated the market to be at in 2016. If you look at the big commercial providers, uh, they are very often legitimate businesses. They are registered in their countries of residence for, as a real company. They pay taxes. Uh, they sometimes have management in place. Um, and checking the tax records of those companies, we see that a one-person hacker publisher can make anything between half a million and one million dollar a year. Um, for teams, it's generally higher. Uh, something like 1.5 million dollar is quite standard. Um, and we estimate the global market size is at least $100 million. Fun fact about Easy Anti-Cheat, who many of the top multiplayer games are currently using for Anti-Cheat. Interestingly, they were purchased for an undisclosed fee last year by Epic Games, who in turn are partially owned by Tencent. So the web of control Tencent has over the gaming area continues to grow. Now back on topic. After CSGO made the transition to free-to-play late last year, over 600,000 Steam accounts received VAC bans in the following month of December, up from over 100,000 the month before. It got even worse in January with over 1 million VAC bans dished out, and almost another 1 million game bans across the Steam platform according to Steam Database account tracking. According to CSGO stats on Twitter, since CSGO went free to play, there has been a 15% increase in daily bans. That's a ton of cheaters even if the player base has been growing. And as one CSGO developer will tell you, even if 2% of the player base is cheating, that can have a huge detrimental impact on the overall game. The cheating problem is it relates to an individual user. So if I, I'm going to play a competitive match, given that I am clean, uh, even a, a low base rate of cheating, like if 2% of players are sort of cheaters and they're randomly distributed, then uh, 2 out of 10 matches that I play are going to be dirty. Uh, and if the rate is uh, of, if the base rate of cheating were 7%, like half of the matches that I get into will have at least one cheater. And that is, again, assuming that I'm a clean player, because there are nine other opportunities uh, for a cheater to land. Moving on to other games, in March, an Apex Legends developer claimed that they had banned just under half a million players in their first month of release alone. PUBG has also had massive issues, and one of those issues has been cheaters since launch, despite still having a price tag. By last year, they had banned over 13 million cheaters, with 2 million of those accounts being just during their fixed PUBG campaign alone. To make this even worse, 14 professional players were also caught cheating last December, putting a very dark mark on the competitive scene. To help combat their cheating epidemic, they are taking drastic measures. In a statement they said, For some organizations, bans and countermeasures aren't enough to dissuade the production of these programs. In some regions, we have been able to work with local law enforcement to arrest groups involved in the production and sale of unauthorized programs, and we will continue to aid authorities in any way we can. We are also finishing preparations for hardware bans to permanently remove stubborn players who refuse to play fair. These bans will begin soon and will target players who continue to cheat on new accounts. In a separate post about anti-cheat, PUBG went further in depth on who they target for hardware bans, explaining that we began hardware bans on November 19th. This is a very sensitive method of banning, so we take extra precautions to ensure that PC cafes or public PCs are not impacted unfairly. We are carefully picking out which machines are to be banned in order to prevent innocent PCs from being hit. When a hardware band is performed, the message shown in the screenshot below will pop up and that piece of hardware will not be able to play PUBG anymore. Alongside hardware bans, we also started to ban macro mice. The plan is to expand this effort to all devices to prevent an unfair advantage of using macro devices. Since many companies themselves will never even admit to using hardware bans, let alone go into depth in what hardware they are banning, the best source to look is found on cheating forums. In fact, anti-cheat devs themselves even admit to looking at cheating forums for the information that they provide. PUBG, for example, claims to have over 100 people monitoring cheating websites, as well as Discord and other messengers. If you're wondering what games have hardware bans at the moment, here's a list of some of the most popular multiplayer ones. Fortnite, Apex Legends, Rust, PUBG, Overwatch, and Rainbow Six are all using hardware bans. It appears that CSGO and VAC is now the only big FPS multiplayer game and anti-cheat not using hardware bans, opting for a different approach with trust and prime matchmaking. 
And while it's true that they aren't straight up banning former cheaters who make new accounts, they have ways of knowing and you are punished for it. You have this uh, sort of concept that we're going to introduce called the rainbow of trust. And we think that blue players are very unlikely to go on to receive bans, but red players are very likely to go on to receive bans. Um, but let's assume in this case that uh, five of the red players are cheating. You can see that in the worst case here, like all five of these matches now have cheaters. And what Trust lets us do is basically say, hey, when we're trying to build matches, if we assume all of these players are sort of, uh, that any subgroup of 10 players here would form a reasonable match, we could draw our matches like this instead. And now we've created four good matches, and the players who we're most certain are not going to go on to cheat uh, are very unlikely to run into cheaters. We have a bunch of data that shows that trust works really well, but I kind of prefer the anecdotal version instead. And so what would happen is you'd see a thread pop up on like the Steam community forums where somebody would say, CSGO is filled with cheaters. And then you'd see somebody else reply, and usually quite a few someone else's who would reply and say, I don't really ever run into cheaters anymore. I don't know what you're talking about. But we would go and uh, basically say, like, hey, let's go figure out, you know, what, uh, what this person's trust score is. And we'd go and we'd look at the OP, and you'd be like, this dude is tied to 50 accounts, and 49 of them have bans for cheating. I don't care that that guy runs into cheaters. He should run into cheaters because he's definitely going to cheat again, but maybe he hasn't done it yet. Um, so that's pretty much all I kind of wanted to say on trust. I did want to mention, though, like a thing that's cool about trust is that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really reduce the rate of cheating, but it reduces the blast radius when people decide to cheat. The problem with this system, for new players, it's possible for them to get caught in the crossfire. And it's also possible for some cheaters to slip through the cracks, although they claim otherwise. Um, so that's definitely a concern for trust. Like That's definitely a thing that players are concerned about, but we haven't seen it actually bear fruit. Like, when uh, that model uh, also tends to be very conservative. So we're actually, despite what I'm showing here, we're actually more likely to accidentally slip somebody who is a cheater into blue than we are to get somebody who's red uh, uh, to accidentally qualify somebody who's orange is red. So, so you would um, recommend yeah. using this if you're really sure that they're cheaters? Like yeah, you want to be sort of very, you want to be um, certain that they are very likely to go on to be cheaters. Yeah. Like most of the people that get caught there have, are actually in the situation that I gave the anecdote about, where they have many accounts, and most of them have been back banned. The real question, though, is how effective are hardware bans at actually stopping cheating? The truth is that there are many ways around them, but they are particularly effective against impulsive and dumb cheaters who don't do research, and they also help slow down repeat offenders who want to rage hack. Here's an example of somebody who claims to have over 100 counts banned in Rainbow Six Siege. Battleye the anti-cheat of Rainbow Six Siege, does do hardware bans. It bans your hard drive and SSD serials you have plugged in to your PC. As a result, every account you play on those drives will be banned in the first match. No one can say exactly when you will be hardware ID banned, at the first ban or after 100 bans. He claims to have never been hardware banned despite having 100 banned accounts. He claims that to avoid this, you either need a spoofer or a brand new hard drive which can also be a thumb drive, but you need to get one quite big because Rainbow Six Siege is like 100 gigabytes. People also claim that Rainbow Six Siege is now doing IP bans, although this is not confirmed. Fortnite and other games using easy anti-cheat appear to take a next step, banning your hard drive as well as your Windows key. According to cheaters for Fortnite, those caught will have to reinstall their windows with every ban. So this brings us to the two main negatives people always bring up when talking about hardware ID bans. The first is what's known as spoofing or using a program to get around a hardware ban by making your hardware look like a different hardware. It's thrown around like a magic fix that cheaters can just use, when in reality is that they also get detected just like regular cheats and you will still have to reinstall your windows with every ban. The second big criticism is that hardware ID bans will ruin the used PC parts market. Since most bans are now just targeting hard drives and windows keys, the effect is minimal at best, and just don't buy used hard drives. How many people are doing that anyway? I can't think of that many. So the biggest weakness with hardware ID bans using hard disk serial numbers will be people who use USB flash drives. However, compared to an SSD, those are far slower and an extra thing a cheater has to buy, especially as game sizes continue to grow. And having an SSD is more and more mandatory for load times. 
In reality, game devs are never actually going to share specific numbers, so we will never actually know how effective hardware bans are, but if most of the leading anti-cheats are now adding them, they must be at least somewhat effective. Or maybe it's more of an easy way to keep the game community happy by giving the illusion that more is being done. However, since most companies other than PUBG aren't bragging about it, I feel like it's the first option. The main thing that hardware ID bans are doing is wasting more of cheaters' time. Hardware bans aren't effective because they stop every cheater, they are effective because they make cheating harder and take more time with every ban. And this is the same thing Valve is also doing with their Prime system and I think we will see more of in the future where it takes more and more time to play with regular players, thus making cheating a bigger time commitment overall and cutting down the amount of casual cheaters, as well as rage hackers and spin botters. Regardless, the fight between cheat developers and game developers will always be a treadmill that never ends. Even with the threat of law enforcement action, there's just too much money in it and too many countries to ever completely eradicate every single cheater. Is he?